Hello and welcome to our Saturday night SEC live reaction. I'm Chris Lee of Southeastern 14, joined by Blaine Gilmer. We're going to recap the day that was in the SEC and, and still is. We got a couple of games that are being decided as we, we do this, although Missouri might be a little more decided than it was just a few seconds ago as the Tigers have just scored a touchdown. We, we've got that. We've got South Carolina going on at the moment, but. Blaine, good day to be a Georgia Bulldog, I guess. B bad day to be a quarterback in this league. It's yeah, there's a really power there. five quarterback if you want to extend that to Florida State. Um, and, and maybe, look, this this was not exactly the, the day we all circled for great football, but there, there were some twists to this that made it, I think, more interesting than any of us had anticipated. Yeah, some head scratching games. Uh, you know, I guess we can start off with obviously Georgia. Uh, that was kind of expected. Um, in terms of we thought they would play really good against Tennessee, and Tennessee wasn't playing well coming into the game. However, I think the place that deserves starting off with Chris, and undoubtedly you probably watched more of this one than than I did. Uh, I did. I've looked through about halfway through and saw New Mexico just new just laying it to New Mexico yeah. State, just laying it to Auburn and then watch the last part of that. And it looked like when I, you know, somebody would have said, okay, the Aggies really laid it to Auburn. You would say, okay, Texas A&M beat, beat, beat <laughs> nope. Auburn today. But it wasn't, it wasn't those Aggies. Not it those was Aggies. Aggies from out West, uh, even further out West. And, and Chris, they looked like the better football team all day than Auburn. Yeah, I was going to say the worst thing about that for Auburn is it wasn't just getting beat; it was the box score was lopsided. So I mean, it, yeah, they they they, I, I think they barely. They, I don't even know if they had three hundred yards of offense total. They did, um, but I think it was like two fourteen. Peyton Thorne, I think, had just over a hundred. Um, they they continue, and I thought they had kind of turned a corner against. Let's all give credit to Arkansas defensively has been good this year defensively. I thought they had turned a corner a little bit. Auburn had against that good Arkansas defense and had gotten a little bit more explosive, gotten a little bit more dynamic, things of that nature. And my goodness, they just come lay an egg right here before this. Chris, I was talking about Auburn and Hugh Freeze. I was like, hey, if they win this game and be seventh, they've got a chance mm -hmm. in the Iron Bowl to shock the world, win eight games, and what a year that would be for Hugh Freeze and company. First year on the plains there in Auburn after that garbacle uh, train wreck that was Brian Harson's tenure there, and and this looked like a, a Brian Harson type game today. That's what this looked like. It, it's like two steps forward, uh, or one step forward, two steps back right now for the Auburn program. Yeah, I, I want to want to dive into the question tonight. How many fan bases are really happy in exiting today? Because I think probably more not than so at this point. But I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that our show is presented by Bet Online. The last of the major pro sports leagues is off and rolling. College basketball is here as well. Bet Online remains your top spot for all your live betting action and contests. NFL. College football, UFC, and NHL all in full swing. Bet Online is your number one source for wagering news, odds, trends, and predictions. All the hoops betting action, along with every sport available at your fingertips with both desktop and mobile access at any time. Head to Bet Online today. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE, that is B L E A V, for your 50% welcome bonus. Bet Online, where the game starts. Blaine, we have gotten about five minutes into this and have not mentioned the big game of the day. That was Georgia's domination of Tennessee. The Bulldogs got number one in the college football playoff and, and frankly, looking like the best team in the country as, as we hit the middle to end of December. Yeah, except for the first play, which a uh, 75-yard yeah. touchdown run, Jalen Wright. But listen, they ended up after that play, Chris. Georgia gave up 202 yards for the rest of the game. Uh, just a dominating performance. Uh, I think C.J. Allen at inside linebacker is cementing himself into the lore of these great Georgia inside linebackers, you know, going all the way back from, uh, you know, 
Roquan Smith really went into Kirby year and then going all the way through these guys that have come through and just been really, really productive inside linebackers. Nicobe Dean, uh, Channing Tindall, of course, Jamon Dumas Johnson is hurt now, and that's why that's why CJ Allen uh, has his opportunity. But he was all over the field. He Tyke Smith was all over the field. Um, and from that star position, just playing elite level football right now, Kamari Lassiter has made himself so much money over the last couple of weeks of what he's going to be able to do in the NFL as a lockdown corner. So I just thought it was impressive what this defense responded. And Chris, have you seen an offense that just looks more easy going, but dominant at the same time as a Georgia offense? I mean, it, it's like, it's not flashy, but you just can't stop it. You you tweeted something out in the middle of the game about Georgia's last two teams being dominant. This team being more just methodical, take care of business. I don't know that I agree with that <laughs> because this well, I mean, this team I, I today said the term surgical surgical. Yeah, okay, and that's what it was. I don't know. Th this team is starting, and I guess it's not the look. It may not be the defense that you know you couldn't move the ball at all a uh, couple of years. I mean but I mean it, it's almost the point where we're starting to split hairs a little bit the offense is so good Carson Beck has been tremendous Dylan Bell played out of his mind today you got Brock Bowers is, is healthy ish I guess <laughs> I'll let you describe that well, one as you may but I mean it, it's a complete football team and by the way you're right after that opening rush by Jalen Wright just dominated Joe Milton for Tennessee and some of this was on Georgia. It just looked awful today. But yes, that's that. That is a very complete football team. Use whatever adjective you want, but it is, is not a team with with a lot of holes. And that even extends to punting, where Brett Thorson still has not had a punt returned against him. I think. Yeah, and the the reason I would describe it like that is because somebody uh, off of that tweet down in the comments they said, "Hey, it's more, it's less sledgehammer and more." Yeah. It's it's more like you know just fine cuts. I mean Carson is just absolutely you, he's unflappable. You know you get pressure on him and stuff like that. He find he knows where his outlet is. He knows where the check down is. He'll take it. Also, Chris, this has been three games in a row now where multiple times he has picked up first downs with his legs on third down, and that's a dynamic of Carson Beck's game that I think no one really expected at this yeah. point in time. And and he's really really good. In terms of in, in terms of knowing when to run and how to run, um, listen, they've they've just got a lot of guys that that they continue to to be able to get the ball to. And and Dylan Bell had his breakout game. This will be known as the Dylan Bell game. He threw a touchdown. He caught a touchdown. He almost broke a kickoff return for a touchdown. Had a great you know back shoulder catch. You know fifty fifty type ball over there. Got some got some carries at running back. I mean. The versatility with that young man, and and the thing about Tennessee is, they could not produce on on third down. They were two of eleven on third down. Georgia was nine of thirteen on third down. Chris, they came into the into the day fifty five point seven percent, which was one of the best marks in the entire country. And now that number has gone on gone up, you know, even even higher than that, going nine of thirteen. So tremendous performance for Georgia. And I think right now, if you're Chris, my, my question to you on the Tennessee program, and you live in the state of Tennessee, so you probably have a better pulse of the fan base and people around there. At this point right now, at year three, where they are, fourth loss they've just accrued tonight, how do you feel that uh, Tennessee feels about the direction of its of its program under Hypel? I, I didn't spend the day scouring Twitter for, for all opinions on that. I, I do get the feeling that there's a little bit of – frustration my, my opinion on Tennessee all along has been that Heupel's had them ahead of schedule I thought last year was a special year again let's not forget what Jeremy Pruitt dragged them through all, all the scholarship losses just the bad football everybody being demoralized and then coming in being a bowl team year one being a team that had a shot at the playoff till late last year Look, Joe Milton lost the job at Michigan, lost the job to Hendon Hooker. I, I know that the talent, the the physical stature, all those things, the ability to throw a ball 118 miles an hour, I get all that, but that does not make you a quarterback. Maybe their quarterback is on the bench. That that was a topic today. That that's some criticism. Well, and, and here's here's what I understand, and then I don't understand at the same time, right? They, they say, well, we want to 
preserve Nico Imaleva's red shirt. There's talk about him getting maybe the majority of the time against Vanderbilt next week. But if he's if he's as great as he is, what are the chances he's going to be on campus for? If for he's five the real years? deal, if he's right. the real deal, that red shirt's not going to matter anyways. I mean, he's going to be right. gone after two years. So that is a uh, as as Prime likes to say, that's a, that's some bull junk, you know. But that's that's what that's yeah. what Deion Sanders says. I mean, that's that's ridiculous. So I think it was apparent early on uh, that Joe Milton shouldn't have been the guy. Uh, yeah. and, and I think that they should have made the change. And I, I don't know if they, it was just the fact that they didn't feel that, that, uh, Nico, if they couldn't protect him or if they couldn't, um, you know, they didn't want to expose him early or something like that. But eventually these guys who are, you know, five-star quarterbacks, they, they come to play and, and they want to, yeah. they want to be, be there to play. So he's going to play next year. Might as well run him out there against Vandy, like you said, next week, but, I was shocked that we didn't see him at some point in that second half uh, for Tennessee. Yeah, I, I was. I mean, I guess at this point, if you're gonna, if you've already got that much in it, you're gonna lose the game anyway. Then, then, then I, I mean, I, I, I sort of get it, but I don't really. I think we're on the same page on that one. By the way, I think South Carolina has probably just won this Kentucky game. There's a strip sack and Tonka Hemingway got a pick, so. South Carolina will have the ball to try to run the clock out with about two minutes left. Yeah, and I, I picked South Carolina to win this game because Kentucky, it, Kentucky's just playing. I think with a lot of apathy. I mean, it's like it's like they've they've the fight is gone, and 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 I don't yeah. understand that out of a Mark Stoops team. Uh, the the physicality's not there. Um, the, I think the discipline on the back end of that defense isn't there at times, and and I, that's just. You know, it's a it's one of those deals, Chris. Where once you we saw this with uh, we saw this with Mark Rick at Georgia, right? And I'm I'm making a I know Kentucky's not where where Georgia was even during the Mark Rick time, but once you've been there and you've had success and you the message the same message for years, ten years or more, eventually it starts to turn a little bit stale and there's got to be an op. That, you know, yeah. there may be time for a change. And I'm not saying they would fire Mark Stoops. What I'm saying is. Does Mark Stoops say, hey, I've done what I can do here. There's many good coaching opportunities open out there, uh, you know, whether it's Michigan State, Texas A&M, whatever, all this kind of stuff. Do you think somebody comes knocking in after these kind of results the last couple of games, do you think he's more liable to listen? Well, I mean, he's he's made the NIL comments. You know, that didn't yeah. sit well with people up there. I mean, I get it. It, you know, it reminds me a little bit. And this is a football audience, but there'll be people here that get this. The one that reminds me of a little bit is, if, to use a basketball analogy, it reminds me a little bit of Kevin Stallings and Vanderbilt. Like Vanderbilt's yeah. not seen anywhere near the the heights in basketball that it saw with Kevin Stallings. And that fan base, and I think at the time it, it felt rightfully so, got upset. They would get to the NCAA tournament, get upset by somebody in the first round. There just never was a lot of postseason run there to get people excited. And and Kevin Stallings didn't help himself by being kind of a jerk, too, which I don't know if that's an analogy with Mark Stoops here, but there was a little more to it than just that. But, I mean, so Vanderbilt fired you know, Kevin Stallings, and, and it hasn't been close to it ever since. You know who Kevin Stallings uh, physically reminded me of? Kevin from The Office? No. So remember, remember on Home Alone, the uncle – the, the cheap uncle that they got mad at Kevin and said, I think Look so. what you did, you little brat over there when he knocked the stuff all over the air, airline tickets and stuff like that. That's who Kevin Stallings reminded me of. But that's a side <laughs> note here. You never know where this is going to go. But uh, yeah, I mean, back, 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 back to that? Tennessee. Yeah. Back, back, well, I guess we're talking Tennessee and Kentucky. I, I just, I don't know. Be careful what you wish for, guys. And and I think the frustration with Tennessee, I know they've been an elite program. They want to get back there. Georgia's in a historic run. 28 games in a row they've won. I think that's an all-time SEC record. Did they tie it, it today? Is that what it was? Alabama had done it twice before. I mean, and, and to do it right now in the midst of all this craziness with NIL and the portal and everything, and it, it, it's crazy. But I, I don't know. I think that any – any frustration towards Josh Heupel to seem, seems to me a little misplaced in light of what he has done in three years. He's had them interesting and relevant for the most part. Yeah, they've they've been awful against good teams this year, but this was supposed to be kind of their reset this year. 
And if Nico Amaleva is the the thing they think he is, and if they continue to recruit well, get players in the portal, and have a, a, a pretty stout NIL, all of which have been things for the Vols lately, I, I think this is a program that's going to be relevant for a while and, and, and probably pretty good more often than not. The problem with Tennessee is I don't know – if how close they are to being good enough up front to be able yeah. to do what they want to do. Even times, even at times last year, it was Hendon Hooker and it was Jalen Hyatt and it was those backs making some special plays even when Tennessee didn't block as well. I think you're seeing the teams that are starting to make that jump, Chris, that, that are becoming uh, higher tier teams in the SEC are the ones that have – really gotten more physical at the point of attack, Missouri being one of those. Now, mm -hmm. I will say this. I'm, I've, I've got to give Florida a lot of credit in terms of the physicality that they have brought to this game. Whether they win or lose, I'm telling you one thing. Florida has brought its hard hat and has punched uh, Missouri in the mouth tonight in, order, in, in terms of the physicality point. I thought that this was a game – you go back and look at the Arkansas game for Florida – uh, you look at the the Georgia game. I mean, you look at, at many different contests um, for Florida, the Kentucky, and there was times where they just they just physically got dominated and owned. Tonight, uh, Florida has been going toe to toe with with Missouri, and you know a good rushing night, two hundred and sixteen yards rushing. So uh, you know, I think I think that that's something to commend Billy Napier and his his squad. Some of that I think was Ricky Pearsall, wasn't it? On that that reverse, uh, may, was that a screen so. pass? Uh, I'm not. I don't think I've, I'm looking at the box score right now. But I've been watching this game and watching Montreal Johnson. Um, Ricky Pearsall did have a 39 yard run, but still, you're you're talking yeah. about uh, Montreal Johnson yeah. and Trevor Etienne averaging seven yards a carry tonight. Chris, that's impressive. Yeah. By the way, I buried Kentucky too early. That the Cats got the ball back and are moving it a little bit. Although I think. Well, they've got, I don't know, 30 yards to field goal range, 35. Almost got that one picked. I, I'd actually flipped away from Missouri. I thought when they went up nine, that was it because Florida's on, what, it's third quarterback tonight? Yeah, the, 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 Brown, the first two. Yeah, I know Mertz went out with a shoulder. Now you've got Brown in, um, So and he fumbled a, an exchange with a running back. So, yeah. You know, it's it's going to be it's going to be, and then after that, that's when Theo Wees went on the uh, seventy-seven yard strike for the for a touchdown. So, I think it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, he, here's the here's the thing. Going back, kind of bring this full circle back to Georgia. You look at what's happening with Missouri tonight. Missouri, a better team than Florida, getting all they want uh, at home. You, you look at um, Kentucky, who has a better roster than South Carolina, and and they're they're getting beat. All I go to say that is you see how impressive and how hard it is to do what George is doing in the SEC 28 straight games because you can have a off night, a down yes. night at any point in time, and they've been able to just continue to put one foot right in front of the other. And um, Kirby Smart was asked the question in his press conference, Chris. They said, hey, what, you know, or is there, what are you elite at? What are you elite at? And he said, taking a punch. We are elite at taking a punch, and we can respond when things don't go our way. And I thought that was – I thought that was a, a very astute comment from the head coach, knowing, hey, I'm not going to say that we're elite at anything, but we are elite at responding to adversity. Sorry. Okay. That was – I was watching Devin Leary and confused how he missed a wide-open guy, but I think the ball got tipped. Um, no, he's he's right. It, it, <laughs> Georgia, it's, it's almost comical. The last thing you want to do is is score a quick touchdown on them to start the game. Yeah, well, somebody asked about that. They said, Coach, first play, he said, yeah, I told Schumann they're going to score on the first drive anyway, so might as well just get it over quick and let them score on that first play. <laughs> that Kirby having a little sense of humor in his press conference there saying, hey, just go ahead and get it over quick, let them score a 75-yard touchdown if they're going to score on the first play and and then go. So, uh, so, But Georgia able to respond and come back. And, you know, I think that – I think there's a lot of uh, – a lot of SEC teams out there that are struggling to find that that identity um, to be able to say, hey, when things don't go right, this is what we can respond with and hang our hat on to come back. Not many teams have those answers. Yeah. Georgia has those answers right now. They're, they're just prepared for everything. But by the way, Tonka Hemingway's just knocked down a fourth down pass. He had a heck of a last two minutes 
in that game. And um, South Carolina's going to snap it once and run out the clock. So now we now we keep an eye on Missouri and Florida to finish here. Also keep an eye on Washington up by two. Uh, oh, okay. At at Oregon State because uh, that directly impacts both Alabama and Georgia if Washington stays uh, undefeated. You know, it would depend on how things go out there. So I think everybody's kind of rooting for a little bit of chaos chaos at this time. Um, but Oregon State has the ball. There's about five minutes left, and they're uh, they're they so they're second and ten. I think they're somewhere in their own own territory, but they just have to get in field goal range to to go up on Washington here in Corvallis. Yeah, well, um, they got they got chaos with the weather out there tonight. Yeah, it was raining a lot, man. And then Texas, yeah. Texas yeah. is in a close one with uh, Iowa State as well, I believe. So a lot of uh, done a really great job with that team, by the way. Yeah, but and it and it looked bleak uh, last year. I mean, it looked like okay, Matt Campbell went from being the name that you see for all these jobs, Chris, out there to being okay. Is he going to get fired at Iowa State? That's how that's how quick it turned on to him, and now he's he's kind of turned that around a little bit. Well, he's he's lost some key players with those gambling situations, I believe. Several key players. Weird, weird how Iowa State and Iowa were both just yeah. implicated by that. But you know, you you would think that would be a little bit more widespread thing, but the state of Iowa got hit hard with that. Yeah, maybe they've got a zealous attorney general or something. I don't know. Uh let's see. Florida is Driving ish, I guess it's a good way to put it. Oh, they're past midfield. Okay, I can't believe Florida's still in this game. It does seem weird that that it seems like Missouri has been a little bit more dominant in than what they what they have been. But it you look at the yardage, uh, Florida four hundred fifty four yards right now, four hundred forty one for Missouri passing. Uh, you know, okay day for Brady Cook, fourteen of twenty four. Not as efficient as as he would probably want to be, um, and then rushing Florida, I said, has owned the, the point of attack there, and that's uh, that's been kind of the the thing that's when Florida can run the football well, when Billy Napier's offense is able to have that running element, and then they can set up the the play action, which helps those receivers who are not elite receivers for Florida, but when they can, uh, you know, have the 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 benefit of the play action to help them separate Chris, then that, that Florida offense is is potent. It's able to it's able to do some things, but it's all predicated on being able to run the ball. And tonight they've been able to against a Missouri team who Chris, I, I mean, who knows that they they did they played pretty good defense against Georgia. They played really good defense against Tennessee and now oh my uh, goodness. tonight not been great. You'll have to give me okay. I, I thought uh, Florida doesn't have a backup quarterback, and now their third guy, I don't even know who this is. Is it Jack Brown? Jackson Brown, Charlie Brown? I don't know, but he just he just took Charlie. an option keeper and went about twenty five or thirty yards to put them squarely within field goal range. So, and then Oregon State uh, right now is they're they're driving as our man Andy Stowe. Andy Stoves is telling us over here, so y'all keep us updated because we're trying to we're trying to do the show. We're also also watching games and things like that. But Chris, other than the, I want to circle back to, to Auburn with that loss to New Mexico State. Um, do you think this derails any kind of momentum uh, for Hugh Freeze in terms of the future going forward, or you just say, hey, this is a fluky first year thing, kind of like you know Saban lost to ULM. Uh, first year at Alabama, Georgia lost yeah. to Vanderbilt. Kirby's first year is that just part par for the course type deal? I, I don't know. Somebody brought up the Saban ULM thing today, and I think it was the exact same week before they played the Iron Bowl. I mean, and I, I don't. I mean, Auburn will come to play that game. We know that. I I don't know. There's been a lot of question. A lot of people who covered Ole Miss, I, I think, have thought that Hugh Freeze was kind of losing it and that if he had kept his job, he would have lost it by on the field stuff, I guess is a good way to put it, as I understand it, that that the, the bill was coming due for whatever and, and they were about to take a downturn and, and that got him bailed out a little bit. I don't know if that's true or not. He's recruited very well. It, it is a little well interesting to me. How, right yeah, I mean, yeah, that, and that's what I mean. It It is – Little 
odd to me that they didn't get more out of Peyton Thorne this year after he's done some good things at Michigan State before. I, I don't I really don't know what to think, to be honest. I mean, Hugh Freeze's track record has been good. So I guess if you had to make me pick a side, I'll we'll take that one. We do need to uh, circle around and, and talk about Shane Beamer because uh, I assume that one's gone final, right? I'm presuming that they ran out the clock and they did. Yeah, I don't. I, that was not a really pretty game tonight. Was not a pretty game, but it gets South Carolina one game closer to bowl eligibility with Clemson coming to town, uh, and that that is a much more winnable yeah. game, I think, than it's been in years past. So, uh, listen. I think that Shane Beamer has a lot of antics and a lot of a lot of things that he personally can work on as a head coach. But hey, he, you got to give him credit for getting his team uh, more motivated than Kentucky tonight. And also Spencer Rattler, um, when, while he wasn't anywhere near as good as he's been for a large portion of this year, I do think that you know obviously he did enough was able to get and things like that. And uh, you know. To, to be able to to pull this one out and that Williams Bryce atmosphere probably uh you got to give those fans a lot of credit because it doesn't matter Chris if if South Carolina is the sorriest sad sack in the SEC at different times they show those up fans, those fans show up and they are loud I would not in a million years have thought that both teams would be under 300 yards total offense tonight yeah I mean that that's that's crazy uh that's crazy that that I get people who were taking the under, I guess, in this game. Uh, <laughs> if Brian Edwards, I don't know if Brian Edwards uh, here at Southeastern 14 told you to take the under, but if he did, you should have listened to him because it was a, it was a, it was a low, low scoring one. Yeah. Here's something interesting from that game. This is the fourth straight game that Ray Davis was under 100 yards rushing. Yeah, offensive line, I mean, I mean, it's, yeah. it's offensive line woes. Not that they're as hurt as they were last year, but they just don't, they just don't dominate at times like they, like they did earlier in the year. I don't know if it's the the if it is, you know, maybe an injury here or there, tweaking the offensive line, things like that. It's just, it's just a little crazy that that's how that's how it's gone down for this Kentucky. And also, people are dedicating numbers to the box, Chris, and they're they're saying, hey, they're trying to make Kentucky one dimensional. Because they, you know, Devin Leary has just not lived up to my expectations, to the, Liam Cohen's expectations, to anybody's expectations. And then when he has, when he has delivered the ball well, those receivers have had major problems. Dane Key with another fumble tonight. Uh, last week it was Barry and Brown fumbling the ball uh, against Alabama. The wide receiver position for Kentucky has been uh, a just absolute disappointment this year. Did you see the Debo Williams hit? on Devin Leary tonight. I didn't see that one. That was controversial. I, I thought when I watched it, maybe I just don't know what targeting is anymore, but he, he didn't get ejected for that one. But, you know, And it wasn't and called thought- on the field either. Uh, they called a personal foul, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe I need to read the rule book more carefully, but that one looked... Well, we you know we go back to the Dallas Turner hit on Jaden Daniels a couple of weeks ago. For all the world, we probably thought that would have been a targeting call with the way it's been adjudicated over the last couple of years. So, you know, it's it's interesting. Uh, we'll see, we'll see how how things like that go moving forward. But I mean, at the end of the day, you got to play in such a fashion where you take the refs out of it, even a bad call, uh, you know, here or there, and. You know, there's a, there's a few teams that are doing that right now. Georgia's one of them. I think Alabama's another one. Uh, you know, but there's there's not many teams that can kind of control the truly control the the outcome of a ball game because they dominate you so well. And I think um, Georgia is just getting it done on both sides of the line of scrimmage right now. Okay, are you watching Missouri, Florida? Because Eli, or excuse me, Billy Napier's got a very interesting call here. It's third and twelve on, I don't know, the 17-ish of Missouri. If you kick a field goal, I don't know how how much of a given that is with Trey Smack or isn't, but let's say you hit it. Let's say you throw the ball here, you stop the clock, you give Missouri a buck 40 to go down and, and try to beat you with the field goal, which we've seen Harrison Mevis do this year. Well, he just ran out of bounds. So okay, well, you're ahead of me. <laughs> the 
So oh, why? That's he, he, yeah, yeah that, he ran out of bounds, and that's definitely not what you want to do to stop the clock for Missouri to so the now, wide he, side of the field too. And Billy Napier's got this look on his face, like yeah, that's not what we drew up here. That's Montreal Johnson too, who's played for him for three years. Yeah, that 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 was that was rough. So um, so now I, you I don't get know. it at the at the near hash. You give Missouri time. I don't know. I, I was I was just thinking, like, do they do they try to throw a pass with the third string quarterback? I probably would not have done it. I probably would have banked on trying to kick the field goal here. Yeah. And so hope now your defense can hold on. So now Missouri is going to be down one, and they've got one thirty six. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Andy Stowe says one fifty two left uh, for. Uh, Washington just got a first down. Oregon doesn't have time. Oregon State doesn't have timeout. So uh, Washington's gonna Washington's gonna hold on there in uh, in Corvallis. So that's a big development in terms of the playoff picture. They stay undefeated, and it looks like now a Pac-12 team will probably position themselves because Chris, we haven't talked about the we talked briefly about the Jordan Travis injury, but Jordan Travis gets hurt for oh. Florida State, and now with this Florida team playing this way. Yeah, they got to go to Florida State has to go to Florida without Jordan Travis. Uh, that could be a that could be a big deal uh, in, in that, and that could have a big impact on the Florida State and the ACC's chance of having a playoff team. Yeah, I have, I have no idea what Florida State's got behind Jordan Travis. By the way, that injury was awful. Yeah, if, if you was, didn't see it and you're squeamish, don't watch it. Yeah, uh, Tate Tate Rodemaker, he's from the state of Georgia. He went in, you know, played well, got him, uh, got him, you know, up comfortably on, uh, got him up comfortably on North Alabama after North Alabama jumped out to a thirteen nothing lead. Uh, I, I I'm pretty sure it was a dislocated ankle for for Jordan Travis is probably what it looked like to me, dislocated ankle or badly broken leg, and so now. Even moving forward, Chris, the the college football playoff committee will take into account Florida State not having Jordan Travis. I'm t- I'm t- I'm saying like going forward, if all things are even between two teams, they may say, well, is Florida State really one of the top four teams in the country yeah. without yeah. their starting quarterback? And, and I think that's – I hate it. I mean, this is one of these situations where I'd rather have – the 12 team playoff and just let them in and figure it out and let them get what they've earned. But I get it. So my thing is, if you've got a, if you got a, a, a Georgia team, let's say that's mowed through all their heavy competition and they go down to Atlanta and let's say something crazy happens and Alabama were to beat them on a last second field goal. You're telling me the Georgia team that just won whatever at that point, it would be 29 straight games. Wouldn't be better than a Florida state team without, Jordan Travis going forward. I mean, you know what I'm saying? So, and, oh, I think and, I think they would be. I just think the committee. My guess is they would want to be faced with the optics of doing that. But yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see what, level reaction. Oh no, I, I mean, I, I and then you got Texas this year who they're trying to hold on against Iowa State, I believe. They're up 26 to 20, 26, 16. Iowa State's got the ball. Uh, so, you know, they're probably going to hold on in that one. So I, I just don't think there's many teams in the country playing, playing better than Georgia and Alabama right now. And I think it, we're going to see that in a couple of weeks, Chris. And I think it's going to be a treat. All right. Missouri has gotten to about midfield. Uh, 40. Okay. What's what's field goal? Let's see. That he kicked a 61 yarder. Yeah. Mavis so doesn't not have too far I mean, out of field goal range, range at this point. He doesn't yeah. have a range. You just, you know, you get it I within think he's 70. better from 60 than he is from 30. You get it within oh, 70. Kind of the, the thicker kicker is going to take a whack at it, you know. We'll yeah. Yeah. see how that goes. But they're they're going backwards right now. Uh so I don't know that it, how how big of a gut punch would this be to Eli Drinkwitz and company after playing such good ball against you know oh. Georgia being right on the precipice of of a, you know maybe winning that game and then just destroying Tennessee? Here's the thing too. My my uh, grandfather always used to say about certain people, Chris, when when something would happen, he'd say, "Just can't handle prosperity." 
can't handle prosperity. And that's a, that's a tough deal to think you got to learn how to win. And, and I had a high school coach that used to tell me all the time, the true measure of, of greatness is consistency. And, yeah. you know, that this is the difference between being a good team in Missouri and being a great team. Let's see other games today. Arkansas beat Florida international 44 to 20. Oh, that almost got picked. Um, we talked about Auburn, New Mexico State. Texas a &M handled Abilene Christian 38 to 10, although that was interesting for most of the first half. Mississippi State beat Southern Miss 41 20, played two quarterbacks again. Ole Miss took care of business against Monroe, uh, Alabama lose, beat Chattanooga, man. and then LSU's clobbering Georgia State with Jaden Daniels having another stellar game. Had the stats game for Jaden Daniels. He's really trying to drive that Heisman case up, and he'll have yeah. the opportunity to do that against Texas A&M next week as well because that'll be his last game before the bowl game. But he had a fourth and 17 desperation deal for yeah, Missouri. Yeah, last gasp. Yeah, that would – I mean, losing this one I think would knock Missouri out of a New Year's Six Bowl. 100%. I mean, you can't lose yeah. to a Florida team that just has been raked over the – Coles against uh, quality opponents, and you do it at home. Uh, yeah, you're definitely losing your New Year's Six bid. Fourth, and, but it'll be fourth and seventeen. They're taking a timeout. Okay, you're, so I think you're ahead of me. So yeah, don't. I, I want to watch this on my own. But let's see. Um, what other? Yeah, Mississippi State. That, that wasn't the prettiest of wins, but Will Rogers was back. Yeah, he was. He wasn't great, but that was good to see. This is awful, I mean, by the way. They had some. They had some semblance of an offense at least. He was able to throw the forward pass. You know, uh, unlike Mike right. Wright. I mean, you know, they were able to utilize some some modern football there. Any way they make that gaming, it's almost interesting. I mean, I mean, other other than being a rivalry game, I don't see it. Yeah, I, I mean, they would. It would have to be a deal where, you know, like they did today, force a couple turnovers uh, early. You know, just sell out with with Jet Johnson and uh, Boogie Watson of, of stopping the run, and then hoping you can play well enough on the back end. But they've been terrible on the back end, so I'm not sure um, if that's a recipe even to do it. But it's going to be, uh, you know, interesting to see Will Rogers and, and company go go about things uh, in that last. Missouri's got some life. Yeah, I wasn't even watching. What what happened? Tell me. Uh, they hit, they it. hit it for a first down, and now they're they're well and they're at the forty. So that would be from here fifty seven yards. They're they're still throwing the ball. That one's going out of bounds. So yeah, Luther look. Bird. It looks to me like boring a turnover. Harrison Mevis is going to get a shot to win this. Old thicker kicker. Was so it, was that Theo Weiss? I couldn't tell. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> not sure. I don't want to say anything because you're uh, either ahead or behind me. But yeah, Theo, Theo Weiss. I think just caught the ball inside the the 30 yard line. They're gonna spike it okay. right here. Yeah, you're you're ahead Probably. of me. I was looking at the play before. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, so if they're at the 30, then that's comfortably within Mevis range. They're not even. They're not even wait. Okay, Mavis is like walking around like he's looking for Miller. a hero sandwich or something on the sideline. Like he's over <laughs> there, just he's he's chomping at the bit to get out there. They, I, I think they're going to try to run another play. Um, I I think he, I would too. But he's over here. He's no, over they're, here. Like, they're, yeah, frothing at the mouth to get out there and kick. And they did. They, they got okay. way closer. So I'll uh, I'll wait on I'll wait on you, but I'm telling you that uh, it looks like uh, Mevis is going to have a manageable field goal here. But as you said, Chris, before he kicks this, I don't know. He's been a lot better on the bombs than he has the the sand wedge. You know what I'm saying? He's 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 better with the driver than he is with the <laughs> the approach to the green. Are you a little surprised they threw it there when you've got Cody Schrader? You can just keep it close. Well, they they don't have a timeout. They, they would okay. have had to well, run. Well, that, that was the next yeah. question. Do they have a timeout? They don't. So never mind. Yeah, they, that they they wouldn't have got the snap off. But Napier has a timeout and he took one. So, um, okay. 
ice the kicker there. So we'll see see what happens. I but, don't know why my feet is so far behind. Can you hit the forward? Is it is it like log? No, I mean I just think my this is an eternal problem I've had. My stream is behind everybody else's from this TV. It's all right. I called my dad earlier. He he told me about a fumble in the Oregon State game before I ever saw it. So I don't, I don't know. It's like it's like everything's everybody's uh, streaming stuff is is at different levels now. But overall, before this kick goes uh, one way or another, Chris, just parting kind of thoughts on SEC Week Twelve. What what are you and and going into rivalry week and stuff like that next week? Uh, just amazed with Georgia. Yeah. Amazed. I mean, I was I was going to tell the stutter. I think Georgia had twelve different guys get a reception or a rush today. Well, and and um, that that's outside the quarterback. So, all right, now we're, now we're kicking the field goal. I'll wait on you. <laughs> and he got it. That's right down. Yeah, the he made it. He made it. Be the thicker kicker uh, pulls Missouri. They snatch victory from the jaws of defeat there, Chris, is, is, is as yeah. we like to say. Okay, so let, let's look at next week. Florida, Florida State, suddenly, unfortunately, very interesting. Very interesting. I say unfortunately because I, I hate to see that with Jordan Oh, that Travis. was terrible. That was a terrible. Awful. I mean, really prayers for Jordan Travis because that kind of injury could could cause bigger problems down the road. I mean, it was it was ugly. If I recall, Georgia Tech made the Georgia game a little more interesting last year than most of us would have thought. But Let me Georgia's tell you just playing on another level right now. I agree. I agree. But it is hard. I don't care who you are. It is hard to keep your mind from going towards Alabama when you have a team that you know you should kick in the teeth with Georgia Tech. And you have to remember, Buster Faulkner, who was intimately involved in that Georgia program for the last few years, is the OC at, at Georgia Tech. So he's going to know a lot about that team. And uh, we'll see. You just can't go sleepwalking, but uh, but yeah, they should handle business. Kentucky at Louisville. Uh, it, Louisville went and won at Miami today. I would have. Yeah, I, I think just would like to see Kentucky be playing better. better if they're going to have a chance. Uh, South Carolina, Clemson feel, feels like it feels like another Carolina upset. To be honest with you, yeah, barn burner. I think it's going to be a high scoring. Uh, you know, just just you know, back and forth fight between South Carolina and Clemson. Let's see. Tennessee will name the score next week and gets Fandy. Alabama, Auburn, who knows? Alabama will win, but can Auburn make it interesting? And LSU A and M. Yeah, that's all that's always a back and forth game. I will say this. I think the young cool. quarter the young quarterback for uh for A and M, uh I think it's Henderson, uh is Slinging that thing left another lefty. He, he's playing pretty well, so we'll see how see how that goes. And then Jaden Daniels can't. That's going to be one of the best. Wouldn't you think that's one of the better defenses other than Alabama? And then I guess Florida State early that uh, Jaden Daniels has faced all year. Yeah, I mean, and so, and I think there's there's he's going to be legitimately be in the Heisman conversation. There was some talk about that on the broadcast tonight and taking the the Tim Tebow path to winning it. I mean, I, I guess it, it seems reasonable to me, but you, you wonder how the voters are going to react. I think Michael Penix winning a game in the rain tonight is certainly not going to hurt him at all against a good Oregon State team. I don't know what the final yeah. numbers were, but if you watch the game, I don't think a lot of dudes would be putting up numbers in that. Okay, Florida has thrown an incomplete pass, and Missouri wins. So the, the Tigers will stay – at two losses and and have a a shot to and go to ten wins next week against Arkansas. On on a Friday they play on Friday uh, at Arkansas and they'll have a chance, like you said, yeah. ten win season. I mean that's uh, the New Year's Six still out in front of them. So uh, what a what a contest that'll be. Remember we'll have the the Egg Bowl on Thanksgiving. It's on Thanksgiving night, so that'll be that'll always be fun. You get a lot of turkey in you and uh, try not to pass out watching the Egg Bowl. You know what I'm saying? Why is that Arkansas game always on Friday? I've never understood that. I don't know. Black Friday, I guess they were they're just making a holiday out of it. I, yeah, I don't know. Don't know what they're what they're doing over there. But it's uh, get a little spotlight on it, and then uh, it's gonna be a fun fun game to watch. And as always, we enjoy breaking down SEC football for you guys. Yeah, let's see. Unbeaten's we got Ohio State, Michigan, Washington, Georgia, and. Who else? Florida State. 
Is Liberty still undefeated? Ah, uh, good question. They were playing really well, so. Jamie Chadwell. Yeah, they're a little UMass today, 49-25. Jamie Chadwell, a name that you need to keep in mind for that Mississippi yeah. State job. Yeah. Uh, they're 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 really eyeing him a lot over there too. So um that 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 can be an interesting move. But uh yeah, James Madison can, no longer undefeated. So for those of you keeping score on those things. Yeah. App State. App State does it again. So I yep, Chris one more play here. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. It, it, there is one, one second left. Yeah. It, after Eli Drinkwitz has already been hugging people and everything like that, and they're going to have one play. <laughs> How, yeah. This would be this would be awful if you were Missouri and, and they and Florida hit a hail mary to beat you. I mean, just they don't. Even, there's a Missouri there's a Missouri trainer trying to give people helmets. They don't even know whose helmets who. They've already collected helmets from people. <laughs> they, they, this is this could be. This could be a garbacle. It could be. It could be awful. Be like the um, the bluegrass miracle. Remember that one? Yeah, it could be like that, or it could be like uh, the you know when the band ran out on the field at Cal Stanford. I mean, who yeah. who knows what's going to happen here? It's crazy. The bluegrass coordinators, are no offense to Kentucky, the, but the bluegrass listen, miracle still cracks me up. The coordinators are not even in the box. The coordinators have already left the box, so they. I mean, goodness gracious, there's all kinds of chaos. Hey, I'm on. just going to tell you, if 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 the defense needs instructions on this play, then then God help you. I'd put Luther Burden in the end zone and just, yeah, say, go catch it, Luther. Luther, you you knock it down. Well, this isn't even close enough for a. For oh, and they 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 caught it. They lateraled it one time, and then they got him. So Missouri okay. has officially won. All that for all that. All right, for Blaine. In, any any sweeping takeaways? I, I gave you mine on on Georgia. You know, the Auburn thing is another one. I, I wonder how much that damages Hugh Freeze at Auburn. That's not the the most patient of fan bases, as you know. Which is that makes Auburn no different than most of the league, but. I think it's the gap between elite and good yeah. in the SEC right now. It's it's wider than I think it's been in a long time. Um, I really think Georgia and Alabama are head and shoulders above the rest of the league, and it's it's not even close. Now, this is interesting. Our friend SEC football, who's been a regular here, Josh Heupel or Billy Napier fired first. Now, that, that is interesting to me because you know my stance on that. I, I think – Josh Heupel's done a phenomenal job. I think any any talk that he's not the guy is, is foolish, but um, the, the the fan base may feel differently. I think Billy Napier. I don't. I just don't see Napier making it after next year. I think they'll keep him, but that twenty twenty four schedule. You go and look at it. It is yeah. awful. I mean, it is awful. All right. Any more parting thoughts? Nope, I'm ready for rivalry week and uh, just to get one one week closer to the SEC championship game. Yeah, and and by the way, uh, a lot of you out there, basketball fans, we have um, been doing a lot of basketball coverage. Blake and I did a basketball pod about last night. Speaking of the Florida, they just had a big weekend this weekend, killing Florida yeah. State in uh, in hoops. So yeah, there's that. I, I, we're, we've been covering that for for folks out there who are interested in that. We are. We are uh, already underway with a lot of basketball coverage here. Yeah, they did. Uh, Chris and and Blake Level, I think they and Max Barr, all these guys. I think they they cover SEC basketball better than anybody out there. So make sure you're subscribing, liking, turn on notifications, all that kind of stuff uh, here on SEC on Southeastern 14 for SEC basketball coverage. Baseball's coming after that. We're going to keep doing football year round, even in the even in the spring with coaching changes, transfer portal, recruiting, all that kind of stuff. So make sure you tuned in right here for all of it. Yeah, we'll be breaking down football games. Uh, I'll be I'll be on a plane to Colorado in the morning, so I'll be doing some shows from Pac-12 country this week or Big Ten country or whatever whatever it is now. He's he's going to see Dion. Everybody, he's going to he's, he's going. I won't I won't proud. be far from Dion. I've never been to that campus, um, but I but I need to. Maybe maybe I'll make it happen. Do they have a home Absolutely. game. He's, 
He's gonna. I don't know. He's gonna go interview Prime. Uh, Chris Chris Lee sits down with Deion Sanders. It coming to you soon on Saturday. <laughs> he Sunday. wants the A and M job. <laughs> yeah, he didn't go right. talk to him about the Texas A and M job. We will. We will have some. Well, we'll have a good bit of content this week. It's it's a holiday week, so it'll be a little bit different. But uh, I know we'll be doing live shows. I think Monday and Tuesday at eleven Central. We'll be doing our previews in the morning again. Basketball stuff. Jen is yeah. the typical Georgia fan. Basketball with a throw up emoji. She <laughs> she's not excited about it. You, you know that they're not they're not bad. I know the Miami game was a disappointment on on Saturday, but or when was that? Friday. Yeah, they're gonna uh, they're gonna have a good. I'm just gonna do that to a lot of people. Good. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. it's gonna be interesting. All right, thank you all for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't. Hit the like button. Those things help our analytics. Tell a friend. God bless you all. Have a great weekend, and thank you for watching Southeastern 14 presented by Bet Online.